Sharia law in full effect in this U.S. town, now look what's happening in the streets. Last June, the horrifying story of a five-year-old little girl from Twin Falls, Idaho, being gang-raped by Muslim refugees shook the nation. The Muslim pieces of filth not only took turns anally raping the girl and urinating in her mouth, but then video ad the attack, later taking the footage back to their father who celebrated the attack and thought it was funny. But just when we thought that justice would finally be served, Judge Thomas Borison who presided over the case has just done the unthinkable to the family, sending a clear message that Sharia law is the supreme law of the land in Idaho, and that if you're a Muslim, you're allowed to rape infidel girls, exactly as the Quran instructs you to do. Since the savage attack on their tiny child that occurred one year ago at the hands of this Muslim filth, Lacey Peterson and her husband have been living in absolute hell as local authorities have continued to try to bury the story and downplay the events that occurred. Many liberal news outlets simply said the story was fake news, with lead fact-checker Snopes at the helm of the cover-up, saying that the rape never even occurred, despite there being endless evidence to say otherwise. We thought that justice would finally be done for this family on Monday, but that was not at all the case. Rather than locking up these raping savages, not only did Judge Thomas Borison let the little roaches off completely free, but then issued a gag order, where he banned the parents from speaking out about the case or revealing to the media what was said in the courtroom on Monday. Pamela Geller reported. The injustice began in the proceedings at the Snake River Juvenile Detention Center in Twin Falls when Judge Thomas Borison of Idaho's 5th Judicial District ordered the little victim's parents to say nothing to anyone, ever, about what was said in the courtroom Monday, or to disclose the sentence he gave to the savage attackers. He did allow them to say that they were unhappy with the sentencing, but threatened to jail them for contempt of court if they disclosed why they were unhappy with it but even though the victim's parents were not allowed to talk to me, there were 12 to 15 people in the courtroom who saw and heard the whole sorry business. I was informed of what happened by an anonymous source inside the courtroom, and the more I heard, the more I understood why this judge wanted to keep all the proceedings secret. Janice Kroger, the senior deputy prosecuting attorney, who was supposed to be trying these boys for their crimes, defended the boys and repeatedly attacked Lacey, the victim's mother. A therapist for the boys was present, as well as a parole officer and a detective. Everything that was said was designed to portray the perpetrators as victims. Throughout the proceedings, they were repeatedly called victims, and the youngest one was called the biggest victim of them all. The court heard absolutely nothing about the horrifying details that this little girl went through after she was anally raped and peed on by these Muslim vermin. The court did however hear about how well the Muslim attackers are doing in school, and how smart they are, while being praised about the ordeal they were forced to go through as they are now claiming they they are suffering from PTSD after having to go through courtroom proceedings. Following the Muslim ass-kissing in the courtroom that lasted over five freaking hours, the three savages were not only found innocent of the rape charges, but were only smacked with a tiny probation punishment. Every time the five-year-old child's lawyer tried to speak, he was silenced. Jalem, the tiny victim, was not even mentioned by police or the judge, as disgustingly, the rapists were made to be the victims in the case thought Pamela Gell or went on. In the midst of this judicial mugging, every time Lacey's lawyer tried to speak up, he was silenced. The little victim, Jayla, was never even mentioned once by Kroger or the judge, or by the police or anyone else. Only Lacey mentioned her, when she made her statement. Lacey detailed how the poor girl is still suffering the effects of this attack, she is wetting the bed and having bad dreams, and more. Yet when Lacey completed her statement, Kroger lashed out not at the perpetrators or their parents, but at Lacey. She viciously tongue-lashed Lacey for a full 15 minutes, until finally Judge Borazin had to stop her. Understandably, the parents of the victim were and are devastated. Back in April, when the attackers initially pleaded guilty, Twin Falls County Prosecutor Grant Loeb said, I am pleased that we were able to resolve this case in a way that was approved and agreed to by the victim's family. This continues to be a serious and sad case, but it was resolved properly, 
properly.